Hello, uh, welcome to my presentation on OER Commons, a unique lens on environmental education, part of 2013 Open Education Week. My name is uh, Madalina Ungo. I represent Agrono Technologies, and my presentation will last about 20 to 25 minutes. There will be time for questions at the end. I welcome your feedback and comments. You can use um, the chat functionality. I think you're already familiar with this. Um, I hope you can all hear me well. If you experience any problems, please check the audio setup wizard to test uh, your microphone and speakers. I will be also checking the, the chat regularly for, for your comments. Great, thank you. So a few words about our work in, in Agrono, meaningful services around high quality agricultural data pools. Summarizes well the work we are carrying out in the context of various European and international projects, standardization efforts and events. Agrono supports technology innovation for agriculture and rural development. Today, I would like to introduce you to one of our initiatives, the Green Learning Network, or GLN, and explain how the network supports, among others, the OER Commons Green Site. GLN is about environmental sustainability, sustainable living, and agricultural practices. So what distinguishes it from other repositories or aggregators who offer educational content? First, GLN is a network of diverse collections of open educational resources, or OER. I will refer to them as OER. Gathered from content providers around the world that address people of all ages, ages and all educational levels. So GLN includes OER for school, adults, vocational, professional development for teachers and trainers, higher education, research, and policy making. For example, within the GLN network, you can find academic papers on sustainability, guides on food standards, how to for farmers, lesson plans for K-12, broadcast case studies, guidelines, wildlife resource management, and medicine, herbal remedies, and so on. How does GLN support such a diverse collection of OER? At the first stage, GLN targets data pools and invites content providers around the world to share their metadata and contribute their resources to the network. This slide that you're currently viewing, um, sorry, that was something on the screen. So this um, slide that you're currently viewing illustrates a few of the collections that are currently available in GLN, such as OER Africa, Digital Green, Zoo Forum, FAO, Flow, Food, and many others. The process is not always straightforward. Um, while some collections contain resources that can be easily ingested in the network, other collections require manual indexing, in order to enrich them with metadata. So our technical team works closely with providers, with content providers to support them with free tools to facilitate the entire process. In the next stages, we involve education specialists and designers in an effort to use this diverse pool of resources to offer users educational content to suit specific, specific educational training needs. In other words, we create web services to highlight different collections on specific topics or targeted for specific groups. On this slide, you can see an example of home pages from various web portals that we have created based on our GLN data pool. For example, you can see the organic edunet um, homepage that offers organic content for professionals. Another example is Eggshare addressing African higher educational stakeholders, or OER Commons Green, which is the example that I will be focusing on today. So I hope that this through brief introduction to GLN, I have hopefully managed to explain the process a bit um, before we go on and have a closer 
look at an example and the survey supported by GLN. I will use the, the rest, uh, the remaining time to introduce you to the story of OER Commons Green microsite. What it stands for, how it came to life, and how this is the result of our collaboration um, of Agrono, which is a Greek-based um, enterprise with a U.S. organization. The goal of OER Commons Green is to support knowledge sharing and continuous improvement of um, environmental and sustainability educational resources. So it is the result of a joint effort of Agrono and ISCMI, or the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management in Education, based in San Francisco, California. As a joint initiative, we work together to design and populate uh, the green OER microsite. Currently, we support it um, through our collections, our GLN collections, um, with, with collections from various providers. Um, while ISME brings in their vast experience in OER and hosts the microsite as part of their renowned OER Commons network. So being part of the OER Commons network as a microsite, um, it minim maximizes visibility of our collections. OER Commons currently provides access to over 43,000 OER for K-12 to college, and the portal gathers over 30,000 visitors every month that use the resources um, the, that use the resources of the portal, but also contribute to the repository. Um, this uh, the next slides will explain how the need for such such a portal came about. Very active in the field uh, of teacher training, it may offer teachers opportunities to create, share, and collaborate using uh, design thinking, online resources, and collaborative tools. So in such events, like the one supported by ISMI, teachers um, have the opportunity to make use, but also to share their own um, OER. You can see here some pictures from, um, from events that involve teachers and the use of OER. Um, here are a few of the needs or challenges that we identified by working with uh, teachers in the field of um, environment. We have identified a need to reconnect learners to nature, especially in, in, in urban environments where when connection between children and, uh, and nature usually happens in artificially designed spaces, it is important for children to have, um, to have a direct connection through school gardens or urban gardens. So hands-on, the need for hands-on activities for them to ex experiment with um, practices such as vertical gardens, for example. Also, it is important to offer teachers access to quality, low cost, or even free, ideally free teaching and learning materials to support its hands-on activities, and also to offer them with reliable sources to teach child children and students debated and controversial topics like climate change and sustainability and, and pollution. This is an example of an education activity uh, that made the use of OER and also resulted in the creation of OER. This is the Sun Curve Challenge design that involved various teachers and learners in the U.S. schools, and their challenge was to grow food using sustainable processes while following the design principles listed below. So to meet a need in their community, to support plants and animal life and the use of renewable energy as well as recycled affordable materials. The result was an aquaponic garden and laboratory for teachers and students. From a challenge, students got together to brainstorm, to research, design a solution, to test and evaluate it, and they finally built a prototype during, their, during the workshop. But here comes the, the interesting part for us. Teachers and learners had the opportunity and were invited to document their experience and to make use of resources available online. This is where the OER Commons portal 
came in handy. Teachers were able to find their resources to help them throughout the challenge, but they were also able to upload the documents that they created. To, to create a folder, save the resources in a folder online, to share them with other teachers, and to provide feedback. Because we used open licenses, uh, mostly Creative Commons, other teachers were able to revise and, and reuse these resources. So this is an example of how a workshop activity that took place in, in school became a valuable teaching and learning resource um, openly shared with other teachers. And we have, we have other pictures as well that show how teachers, for example, from Brunei use resources that the U.S. teachers created and used in their classroom. Here is a screenshot of the OER Commons Green uh, microsite and the resources that were used and produced during the Sun Curve Challenge uh, experiment. You can see a result of 53 re uh, resources, OER. So by bringing together ISCME plus Agrono collections, we were able to set up such a portal like the OER Commons screen that I'm introducing today that not only gathers resources and textbooks from textbooks from reliable providers, like you can see here listed MIT OpenCourseWare, Teachers Domain, PBS, Open Universities, and so on, but also teacher-generated content, high-quality teacher-generated content. And all these resources use um, open licenses, mainly Creative Commons, giving other teachers the, the opportunity to share and, and remix and reuse again and modify uh, these resources, which is very important. This slide illustrates how we organize content, how we organize um, the resources that we currently have in OER Commons Green. So you can find there are around uh, 4,000, a bit over 4,000 resources that cover topics like natural resources, um, human impact, tools for change, like uh, business and economics, eco art, policy, also ecosystems, endangered species, water, energy, very important topics. These materials range from assessments to audio lectures, to full courses, games, textbooks, lesson plans, simulations, and video lectures. Um, they address primary, secondary, and post-secondary education. We have integrated on the website various social features um, to, provide, to provide teachers with different tools. These are um, social bookmarking, tagging, rating, reviewing, sharing of um, OER. And my next slide my next slide here illustrates how such a resource looks like on the uh, OER Commons Green website. So on the left side, um, you can see you can see the title and um, an abstract of the resource, information about the author and the institution that provides this, as well as conditions uh, conditions of use. On the right side, on the other hand, if you are a registered user, you can select a folder where to save this resource, so you can actually come back and, and find it later. You can rate, review, evaluate it. You can align. Uh, I know the com common core standards are, are, in, are, are an important topic now in, in the US. So you can re align here the resource. You can share it on popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter. You can add tags to it. Um, also, you can add comments for every resource. Of course, these options are available for for registered users, but registration is um, is open and free for um, for everybody interested. Um, another resource here for post secondary. This is from MIT OpenCourseWare. is a course uh, on environmental justice. Again, this is. Um, listed under Creative Commons 3.0. 
and um, you can see a long list of tags here that using tags is encouraged because it helps after it helps learners and teachers easily retrieve content of on the on the website the final resource that I'm uh, that I'm displaying here is animals at the extremes from open university again licensed under Creative Commons and offering the same um, the same social social features so in, in this slide you can currently see a number of banners uh, we like to highlight and promote our content and we do this either through uh, through banners or by highlighting different collections on the one hand this allows content providers to gain visibility on our website of promoting their um, their content but on the other we also like to expose learners and teachers to diverse um, topics clever topics for example you can see here um, banners on on diet and nutrition topics like the organic store wars or banana sweets to eat or not to eat to deal with uh, issues like consumerism and diseases agricultural production but also K-12 resources like Incredible Insect Mouth with beautiful images and media on the on biodiversity, on natural life, as well as automobile choices and alternative fuels presenting issues like um, like buying a car, what what are the decisions that you have to make. So this this banner is that we um, we promote are meant to highlight different content and we change this regularly making sure we, we offer diversity. So to sum up, um, the OER Commons Green story illustrates um, how using high quality data pools mm, helps in creating services, targeted services to answer specific, specific needs. So this is one service that we created on top of a data pool from global content providers. Providing thus we provided different users with relevant content and managed in creating communities of learners or of teachers, of researchers, of professionals that can access content, all the uh, all useful content in one place instead of having to go to different different sources and different websites. Now, still Green Learning Network, or GLN, is a relatively fresh initiative. Um, it's a work, work in progress for us. Therefore, we welcome and invite content providers to share their content and their experience with us. There are different ways that um, a content provider can share content, such as harvesting and ingestion of content or curation. And um, our technical team is, is prepared to, to advise and support any content provider through the, entire, through the entire process. However, we are very careful about our curating policy and quality assurance process, which means that before uh, integrating a collection in our database, we look, um, we look at them carefully to make sure that every resource can be accessible via unique URL and that providers will ensure stability for the URLs that they share and will be willing to, to update this if necessary. Uh, we're looking for clear license status. So in many cases, we encounter resources, uh, providers that do not state clearly on their website what users are allowed to do or not to do with a resource. Um, and this can be very confusing. So we're looking for those resources that explain clearly how a resource can be used. Um, we're also not interested in including resources that um, advertise commercial products or that require participation in, in specific um, religious calls as part of its educational content. In GLN, we welcome resources that are available in more languages. Um, in, in more than one language. However, um, we have a lot of content in English, but also content in more than 10, 10 languages currently. 
it is though preferred that metadata to describe these languages is in English to make uh, make work a bit easier. This is highly preferred. So um, this would be all. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and for your time. You can see here listed my email address. And if you have any questions now or any comments, any suggestions, please use the chat, chat box or I'm not sure if you also have the, the possibility to to use the talk button and, and speak out, but I'd like to welcome welcome you to participate. Thank you. Um, Karen, thank you for your comments. I've, I've, I've noticed your comments throughout my presentation. Uh, you commented about about several resources that you found interesting. Um, are you yourself um, a teacher, an educator? Do you have experience with or your comment screen? Have you used any of its resources so far? Uh, if you have a microphone, you're more than welcome to uh, to use the talk button to share with us. Yes, thank you. Um, it is true that um, um, we also have experience in the field of OER, but from personally what I know, I am not familiar with any other OER initiative that focuses exclusively on environmental and sustainability topics. So this is why we believe that our efforts in this direction um, will be very useful to, to educators and, uh, and to learners likewise. Igor, thank you for your comment. Yes, indeed, it's, it's very important to be able to um, to rate um, OER, and especially because in our case, every resource before it's published, it, it goes through several reviewing processes, so we don't publish it unless we really believe it's high quality, but it's very important to give teachers the possibility to, to comment and to rate from their experiences and to share um, to share their, their knowledge regarding a resource or a topic. So I, I think this is, um, this is one of the great advantages of, of building also a community around, around such a service. Thank you. Um, if there are no more comments or questions, I'd like to thank you for your participation and um, if there's anything more you'd like to know or to add, please feel free to, to follow me either on Twitter or, or just drop, um, drop an email. Thank you very much.